Oh, wait, let me get my coffee. You guys know I bees all over the place all the time. You know, running around like a bat out of hell. Took the, a couple days off, now I'm back like on the grind. By the way, this whole makeup look, except the eyes, will be up. Well, the eyes will be up on YouTube Shorts. This is a video I posted. It's sweat proof makeup for all my girls that sweat. You guys, <laughs> oh my God, my intro. Hi, my name is Magdalene Janet. If you are new, welcome to the fam. Please don't forget to like and subscribe because I'm always here literally all the time. And come join. We always have a good time. We're always chilling, talking about makeup. I'm also vlogging now. So that's very exciting. So you guys have asked me for this video for a while now, but I'm like, I needed some time to get to it. You guys know how much we love powders in general here because I am an oily gal. We got a lot of oily gals here, textured girls, long wearing makeup gals, all kinds of gals here. So I am here to talk to you about these powders and I will be adding some footage of me actually demoing the powders. I have been demoing them for a while just so you guys can see how the application looks, but I'm more gonna speak about the actual powders the textures and all that jazz. So I'm gonna start with my least favorite to my favorite. Not my least favorite, because they're all good. All these powders are really good. I like using them, I enjoy using them. I also wanna rank them, because a lot of times you wanna see more ranking as well as info. But before we get started, you're like, what is setting powder? Why pink setting powder? Why not translucent? So setting powders, if you're not familiar with what it is, it's essentially going to set your makeup. It's literally in the name. It's gonna set your makeup down so it doesn't move. You know how foundations, cream bronzers, cream blushes, anything cream will move around. You need something to set that down so it doesn't move around and it lasts all day long. Especially in the heat, if you wear makeup for a long time, if you have oily skin, it all really depends. Setting your skin, it really depends on how much you want to set and how little. If you have dry skin, you may just set the T-zone. If you have oily skin, you may just set everything heavily. If you don't like setting powder a lot, but you know you need it, you just set and be done with it. It really depends how and what works best for you. Essentially, setting powder is needed for your makeup to last any way, shape, or form. That's the purpose of it. I love setting powders because setting powders not only sets your makeup, it blurs your skin. It really evens out like the texture, depending on the type of setting powder it, it is. If it's a really good one, it just makes the skin look super soft, super flawless, just beautiful. And that's really why I'm legit obsessed with powders. You guys know I review powders all the time because there are powders that are good and great. There are powders that are not good. There are powders that set your skin well on the eye area. It's scrapey, crepey, dusty, looks like a mess. I feel setting powder should work for three areas. Your lids, your under eyes, and your skin. If it's only working for one out of the three, it's not worth it, especially because, you know, makeup is expensive. So that's kind of why I love setting powders, why I use it so often, and why we're here. And pink powders have been all the rage, I would say the last year. The OG OG pink powder has been Ben I Pretty and Pink. I don't use this often because it's not readily available. It's like available on Amazon sometimes and sometimes it isn't. Ben I is the OG of powders. I love the translucent powder. I've used this one but I don't use it like I told you guys because it's hard to come by and I don't like using products you guys can't get your hands on easily. This is like an honorable mention. This is the powder that I saw that was first in the pink sort of realm. So why pink powders? I find that pink powders really works well for people of color because it just melts in. Translucent powders are great, but a lot of times it leaves this slight white cast. It depends. It could leave like a super thick white cast or a subtle white cast, but there's always like a white cast on your skin. And then you have to just go over bronzer and kind of jazz it up so you don't have that white flash when you take photos. That's why pink powders I feel like have been all the rage and it highlights it could color correct too if your foundation is a little too warm if you add a solid pink powder it can really tone that down if you want a brighter under eye a pink powder can do that a translucent powder is just translucent it like melts into the skin we'll leave that bit of a white cast but it gets the job done that's what kind of makes a setting powder so great because its formula is also very thin it's not a foundation powder that adds pigment this 
just really melts into your skin. And because it's such a finely milled lightweight powder, it really works for most people and most skin types. So this has been out, right? But then when Huda Beauty released her cherry blossom powder, I think a year ago or a year and a half ago, I think everyone was like paying attention to pink powders because they're like, wait, what? There's such a thing. It could highlight. It could do all kinds of stuff. I wanted to give you guys background as to why we're here because I've already done a video of my favorite setting powders. I think I have to do a new updated one because there's a lot that have come out. I want to focus only on pink. So starting off with Danessa Myricks. Danessa Myricks powder just released. This powder I really like because it's very gentle and it mattifies the skin. It's not as finely milled as I personally like it. It is milled well but I feel like it could use a little more finely milledness. It just kind of gets stuck in certain areas but it does blur and mattify and last all day long. So if it wouldn't get stuck in like those areas I feel like it would be a perfect powder. It's like a baby pink. It just sets the skin beautifully. So Vanessa Myricks in general though I really love her makeup. I think it's amazing and I also did a full review on this one if you want to check it out but that's the only caveat is like the nose area. Area. I've used the powder a few times and I continue to get like the things on my nose. It's just one of those things you have to look out for. I like it. I think it's a great powder. And let's move on. Look, the one that started the hype is Huda Beauty. I like Huda Beauty powder. I feel like when she first released her powder, it was like, whoa, you got what, like six shades, eight shades immediately off the bat. Like most brands would do three shades or one shade. Huda Beauty kind of came out swinging. And then eventually look, she released the pink one. And this one is super pigmented. I really like the formula. This is truly a finely milled powder. Like you really love look at it and it looks like baking flour and that's usually how I kind of see if a powder literally looks like baking flour and it sticks onto your your finger like this it's finely milled in my opinion you see it doesn't stick completely but it has to have some stickiness in order for me to be like okay that's a powder that will really hold makeup and blur things out oh and by the way this the Danessa Myricks and this powder also sets the under eyes and the lids well. I wouldn't have a powder here that doesn't do that. I'm just really more talking about textures and actual colors. Huda Beauty does make a very well as well. Her powders do have fragrance, so keep in mind, I know a lot of you guys are sensitive to it. When it first came out, this was the darkest pink I had used on my face a year and a half ago. So keep in mind, the color is legit. Vanessa Myricks, it's a little bit lighter. Moving on, Laura Mercier released this shade, but it's more peach pink. I find that it falls more like translucent shade because it is really, really, really light. But we know Laura Mercier's powders are bomb. One of those holy grails, like if you love her powder, I know so many people that continue to use it time and time again because it's just that holy grail product that if it ain't broken, don't fix it type. And this is it. This is how it looks. It has a peach tone. I would say this is probably the lightest in this entire collection. Because it has that peach, I feel like it makes it a smidge lighter than the Givenchy that we'll talk about. So just keep in mind, but it's a great powder. I really like how it sets everything. It's mattified. You guys know Laura Mercier kills it with powders. She's known for her powders. And I just really like that now there's another shade to work with. I do find that online on Sephora's website's always sold out. So I don't know what they're going to do. I don't know if they're going to reformulate this to be talc free because she did her other line being talc free. And maybe that's the reason why it's sold out. If she does, I will keep the description box updated for you. But nonetheless, I do like this powder. You know the difference when you buy this. It has the pink cap. You get a bunch of products. You get a one ounce of powder, Huda's 0.71, and Danessa Myrick's 0.39. So keep in mind, this will last you forever. <laughs> Okay, next one up that I stopped using for a little bit. I really like it. It's kind of in my top three here because Lorox 
powder. Oh my god. This is also, I would call it more, categorize it more on the light pink, but it leaves the skin super flawless, super blurred, super matte. Makeup will last all day, like no issues here. But what I like, it doesn't look as finely milled, but it is. You see how much it's getting stuck on the on the finger? That's when you know. This has become one of my favorite ones. This one's available on Amazon, at Macy's, I think, and sometimes at Ulta. I'll link it down below. I don't hear people talk about this powder too much, but it's so good. Actually, one of you guys asked me to review it, and when I did, I was like, what? I've been missing out? And it's the perfect pink. I feel like if you're more on the lighter skin tone, I kind of feel like it's more on this sort of area here let's look i'm gonna actually show you too how they look on my phone because i feel like on my phone you can really see the true color of the powder the rock one is really really good it's super smoothing this is one of the ones anytime i use this my under eyes look so bomb like so whoosh so non-creasy so smooth you know oh and how big is this how big is this 0.83 ounces so still not one ounce she's winning here laura's winning hold on let me get a sip Next one up is Givenchy. So Givenchy's powders in general are amazing. I first was introduced to the powder, the shade number four, and now I'm here using shade number three, Volé Rosé. A lot of you guys told me, hey, this has a bit of sheen to it. When I reviewed it, I did not see it, but as I've been using it for months and months, this does have a slight sheen to it. It's weird, because when you look at it, you don't see it at all, like at all. But as you place it, on your skin you're like wait it's weird it kind of comes on sometimes sometimes i see it sometimes i don't and i don't like shimmered powders i like a matte powder because the matte powders are the ones that are really gonna set and blur everything a glowy powder is great to like give a little highlight to the skin you guys know i have oily skin i naturally highlight so i never really go to glowy powders a lot of you guys have asked me to review them and i don't know i haven't done it yet but i know you guys like the elf ones i'll definitely maybe use it in like a full face of new makeup or something but back to this it's weird like i like this one but sometimes when i see the glitter I'm kind of like, ugh. Not that it ruins the makeup because it doesn't. It really sets my eye area well, my skin well, but I just personally don't like anything shiny, glittery when it comes to powder. That's the only caveat. Givenchy is a great powder. It's amazing. It's no wonder why it went viral and it's like, this is my second one. I purchased the second one because it's that great. If you don't like any shine, sheen, shimmer, get the shade number four because that one's legit matte. This one, you know, it's a little finicky, but this will have your skin looking super, super smooth. I really find myself gravitating to it. So Givenchy's powder, it's 0.42 ounces. This is the most expensive one. So keep in mind of how much product we get. Last but not least, which is I think my favorite one, is one size original powder i like it but i don't like it as much as i like the pink one this one it is the most pigmented pink powder to date the pinkest i've seen it makes a difference i feel like this will definitely update the look of your skin if you don't want to be super super pink this probably is not for you if you are fair skin this may be too pigmented for you this may work people with medium skin and deeper because you can see the a bit of a change and especially the more powder you put on the more it's gonna change i love the color you'll never have that translucent sort of like white cast white sort of flash that you can get with powders i know patrick star really caters to people of color oily skin people he likes things to be matte and this is what you get with this powder i really enjoy the color of this i was very surprised just how pigmented and beautiful this powder is it can up Update your foundation shade a little bit. It's the one I have on today. Oh girl, look at this hair. Honestly, today I don't even think it updated or changed my foundation or anything. I think it looks really, really good. And I reviewed it. A lot of you guys did see it kind of cooled down my foundation, but to me that's fine because my undertone is neutral cool as opposed to neutral warm. Here, one size, one size is the biggest, 1.2 ounces. So, oh, winner, winner, chicken dinner. And then Laura Mercier has the runner up with one ounce exactly so okay that's good to know let me show you all together how these powders look okay so here i want to show you this is danessa myrick you see how it's like a light pink and it kind of slides a little more it's not as finely milled 
Here we have Huda Beauty. Huda Beauty, it has a good pigment and I would say this one in one size is the most finely milled powder, but you can see the color. Here we got our Laura Mercier. You see that tone, it's peachy and a light pink. I would say it's like translucent peach. Here is Lorac. Lorac is another one that's super finely milled and it has a good color. You see how both of these look super similar in texture? Givenchy is a little bit on the light side for the use look very finely milled powder and look i'm telling you you can't you see there's no shimmer here you see and then one size one size is the pink of all pink and you can see like next to all of them how deep this pink is i would say like this is the pinkest huda second third fourth fifth and then the lightest i just want you to get a look on all of them and you guys don't mind my messy desk so you saw with the phone footage the differences in shades these are all great powders it honestly could just boil down to what shade will work best for you because as you guys have seen i reviewed all of these and these all set the skin beautifully they blur a little bit mattifying they set the eye area well and essentially that's what you want with the setting powder after you use a setting powder you can always go with the foundation powder that's always optional but like i told you guys the foundation powder will always offer more coverage this was so exciting to do and i'm so happy i was able to get this for you because you guys have been asking me and pink powders all the rage it's funny because the barbie movie is coming out soon so it's like we're all in a pink mood right now you know have you tried any of these if so do you like it do you not like pink powders do you want me to try other pink powders am i missing i feel like i have them covered but maybe i'm missing you guys know this one is an honor Rary mentioned Benai does great powders. Oh, I'll also link the full reviews of these powders if you want to check it out, see something more in depth. I just wanted to do a quick roundup and sort of a ranking video so you can have it in place if you're ever looking for a powder, especially a pink powder. This is it, fam. Thank you guys so much for asking me to do this. I always appreciate you guys giving me ideas of videos because, you know, I'm always here, I'm always active, and I want to create content for you guys to watch and enjoy. I love you guys so much. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, click the button right there, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Where's my remote? Where's my remote? Did I lose it? Oh, it's under here.